Hey, this is Kenny of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing real good, and I want to thank you for joining me on the show on such notice. No problem. Anytime. What made you decide to get into the wrestling business, sir? I have been a wrestling fan all my life. My grandfather got me in it, and... In 1982, I met Kevin Sullivan. We became friends, and next thing you know, I was in the business. I trained, and my first show in 1984 was Battle of the Belts in Miami, and there were 30,000 people, which was my first show, semi-main event, managing Kevin, and it's great. I still love it 30 years later. So you said you made your debut in 1984? 1984, yes. I just want to point point out that that was the year that I was actually born. <laughs> Thanks. My fiance was born in 1985, so. Ah, okay, okay. I don't know if I should feel old or shouldn't feel old, but I don't. Hey, hey, man. Age, age ain't nothing but a number, man. It is nothing That's but right. a number. That's right. That's all it is. Yes, sir. So... That has managed Kevin Sullivan and his cult back in the day of Florida Championship Wrestling, which is currently the official developmental territory for the WWE. You've also have managed uh, Bob Whoop, uh, Mark Lewin, the late great Luna Vacuum, may she rest in peace. Antonio Banks, aka MVP, one man game. Superstar Billy Graham, among others. I mean, how does how does it feel to work with all those those world known names in the wrestling business? It feels great. When I was a fan, a lot of those names were were people I watched on TV, and in later years, they became friends. So it feels great. Do you have any stories as far as what was it like to work with her, collaborate with her, being on the wall with her? She was awesome. She was a very good friend. I knew her since almost the beginning. She came in with us right after I started, and she was a great person. She actually celebrated two birthdays every year, her real one as, Trudy Vachon and Luna's birthday when Luna was first born and I was there that day when Luna was born at the 106 North Albany in Tampa at the TV station or where we filmed Florida Championship Wrestling and Luna was born and a slap to the face by Kevin Sullivan. I'm sure you've probably seen the clip. If not, it's on YouTube. And that one hit me hard. There have been a lot of deaths to friends over the years. She hit me hard. And so did the fallen angel, who was murdered years ago also by her husband, who at the time was Chris Benoit. And fallen angel used to come to the ring with us. She was Kevin Sullivan's wife at the time and that one also hit me hard that's that's very strong man and you know the wrestling business it could definitely take a toll out of everybody's you know whether you're an up and comer or whether you're a veteran such as yourself you know regardless of what people feel about wrestling it, it is real as it gets you do get hurt you do get injured, and, you know, it, anything can happen, you know, and there's, there's some unfortunate circumstances that happens. I mean, how do you feel about the physicality in, in the wrestling business? And as far as, you know, you've been, you've been around for a long time, and, and it takes a toll on you. I mean, how do you feel about the physicality, you know, dealing with people in, in the business? It's not as easy as people think. You do get hurt. Over the years, I've had a torn bicep, torn ACL, nine concussions, herniated discs in my neck and my back, and it happens. You go out there, you fight. You might not hit anybody as hard as you can, but you do hit them harder than people think. 
I'd like to see some of these people that call it fake come in and take a chair shot to the head and see how they feel. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, if people feel that way, you know, go in the wing with a, with a well-trained professional wrestler. And be in the wing with that person, male or female, I say five, ten minutes. Let them woofing you up. Let them punch you exactly what you see on TV and see if they they still have a still feel that way uh i, I mean that's it is unfortunate because wrestlers are some amazing athletes they put their heart out their heart and soul just like any other athlete just so they fans can be entertained whether they're watching at home whether it's the indie scene whether it's out there on national television I mean, these are trained professionals. They are athletes, and they should be respected just like any other athletes. That's true, and most of the time they are. But you get a few people out there that want to start trouble. They want to cause heat, and that's what happens. You mentioned Luna Prashan a little while ago. Luna could probably take on 90% of the guys in the wrestling business and win. She was a real tough girl. I mean, she was tough as nails, and I mean, she, like a lot of wrestlers out there in Canada, made a name for herself, and I mean, she may, I say unfortunately, she may not have gotten a lot of respect that she deserved. I mean, she's a pioneer in the business. I mean, she opened doors for a lot of women that didn't think that they could hang in the wing with with their fellow woman let alone guys i mean she she's she's a pioneer and i feel like she should get more respect as far as i'm concerned um she was around when the women were wrestlers not when they were divas now they're divas in the ring at that time they were wrestlers she was trained by the fabulous mula and when she got in the ring you definitely no one's going to call it fake absolutely so you are definitely known for the the snakes and the cobras when you enter to the wing. Um, when that, how did that first came about, and w- were you afraid of snakes prior to you know that being a part of your your character? Years ago, I was afraid of snakes, even a small snake. And I started working for National Wildlife down here in Florida. I had to go pick up an eight-foot boa in a lady's kitchen. And at that time, I was still afraid of snakes. So I walk in. The lady won't go in the house till I catch it. I walk in, stare at the snake for about 15 minutes, finally pick it up, put it in a pillowcase, take it home, and handle that snake every day. And that snake's name was Samantha. And that was the first snake I ever brought to the ring with me, an eight-foot boa. How long did it took for you to be, you know, comfortable into holding snakes as you make your way to the ring? You Would it be a few weeks, maybe a couple of months per se? I got used to that snake very quickly. He was real calm, or she was real calm. Maybe within a week I was fine with her. Then later on, I got into venomous snakes. I've had full cobras. I had a black mamba for 11 years. I had a green mamba. A lot of crazy snakes. And it's the number one phobia. People are terrified of them. There are some snakes that are real calm. They're okay. Other snakes that will kill you that I've had. But people come up to me, will that snake bite? Will he bite? Will she bite? And my answer every time is anything with a mouth can bite which is true. They won't always bite, but they can bite. I'm not saying they will or they won't. All I'm going to say is it, it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of br- to be brave. I mean, it's one thing to be in the wing, do what you do for a living, but to have a, a the snakes with the, with the size that it looks and and just to just keep doing you, I mean, it's definitely amazing, and look, I'm scared of snakes, and I guess the the only way to avoid getting bit by a snake 
is he just don't panic. He just don't be concerned. He just got to, you have to be calm because animals are definitely going to react if they sense that you are scared or you're up to something. At least that's how I feel about it. They can definitely tell when, when you're nervous. If you walk up to a snake, if you try to handle them, they can sense the fear, and they won't be really calm at the time. But you'll get over your fear if you handle the snake, a real calm snake, and got used to it. But you just have to remember all snakes aren't going to be like that snake is. If you see one calm snake, you can't go somewhere and pick up a snake and think it's going to act the same way. It won't. Absolutely. Um for for anyone out there that wants to get into the wrestling business, whether as a wrestler or a manager or a referee or whatever the case may be, uh, what would your advice be to anyone that wants to get into the wrestling business? Before they get in, finish school. That's the first thing. So you have something to fall back on. After that, find a reputable wrestling school, wrestling training academy. There are so many out there. There are thousands of them out there. But a lot of them just want to take your money and run. You just have to find one that has a good reputation. There are a few down here in Florida that are really good. There's one that just opened recently. Big Vito LaGrasso, who you know from WWE, ECW. He just opened one. And I'm sure if you go to that one, you will be trained the right way. The Dudleys have a school in Orlando, Bubba and Devon, another good school, Jesse Neal, and others came out of that one. And there's one in South Florida that is really good. It's called The Spot. I don't have the address right now or the phone number, but if you go onto my Facebook, I have links from there. But those are the three schools that I would recommend right now. Most definitely, and um, it's very important to get trains. I mean, don't go through the backyard route. You know, just go to one of the schools that he mentioned, and it's just like any other sport. It's you gotta train, you gotta train, you gotta train, and you know, whatever. When the time is right, maybe you know wrestlers out there will get an opportunity get into the indie ranks, and if they get good, you know, who knows? They'll be on TV, but it's, it takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of hard work and more, like, shut up and listen type of attitude. Um, I guess for, especially for the young guys that's trying to get out there, um, the, how, how important is it to have what is, what's passion? A lot of wrestlers talk about it. They preach about it. It's highly important. How important is it to have passion for the wrestling business? It's very important. If you don't have a passion for it, you shouldn't be in it. You shouldn't have an ego. A lot of a lot of the wrestlers now have egos and they have attitudes, and it's just not good. People are not being trained right. I just thought about another school in California. A good friend of mine, Gangrel that I've known for probably 30 years. He has a school out there with Rikishi, and that's another great school. So um, do you have any, like, upcoming shows, appearances that you would like to promote, sir? I have a few coming up. I have one this Sunday in Pompano, Pompano Beach, Florida. It's for Ring Warriors. It's a national TV taping, and... A couple of names, Tyson Tomko, New Jack, Jesse Neal, Bruce Santi, the Headbangers, Steve Carino, Big Vito. There'll be a lot of people there. And the admission is only $5. It's a 2 o'clock show at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. And if they want more information, they can go to ringwarriors.net. Or again, they can go to my Facebook and I have the flyers up there all the time. I also have one on the 18th in Pompano, another one for RPW. Then we're going to have six live matches at 5.30, and then it's at a sports bar. They can go inside and watch SummerSlam, WWE's pay-per-view. That's at CJ's Draft House in Pompano. 
and that one is only five dollars also for the live matches and the pay per view. That's August eighteenth. And the last one in August, I have one on August 31st, Saturday, August 31st, in Orlando at the Orlando National Guard Armory for USA Pro Wrestling. And again, there will be Tyson Tomko, two Cole Scorpio, Matt Stryker, Jesse Neal, Francisco Schiazzo, and and others. And I think that's a 5 o'clock show. The only thing I have is a phone number for that one, 407-202-9033. And like I said, if you want to find me on Facebook under Snake Master Jeff, I have all the flyers for upcoming shows there all the time, and people can message me and actually give them the information on the schools that I mentioned too. And uh, if people want to learn more from you, they can check out your official website at uh, snakemaster.com. Check out the uh, uh, the news, photos, links, etc., and merchandise, too. Uh, so sh- check out all the shows that he mentioned. Support local indie pro wrestling near you. Um, well, sir, I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. I want again. I want to thank you for calling for being on the show on such notice. Uh, best of success, going out to you and uh, continued success in your wrestling career, man. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks, Kenny. It was my pleasure. Anytime.